look at me like I'm crazy when I shut my feelings out. You look at me like I'm different. Still you stay cause you feel something real. Get so lost in my moments. Doesn't mean I don't need you. I, I, I fell in love with your colors. They kinda tell me what I'm thinking. Fell in love with the way we are And the way we lose it There's something different about us And the reason why we stay Stay We fly around like paper planes They never know where we will fall Nobody can see us Still they wanna tear us apart There's something different about Hi, welcome to my sewing room where I create and obsess over all things vintage style, vintage glamour, vintage fashion, vintage sewing, all things vintage, currently obsessed with the 1940s and the 1950s, but possibly the 1960s, so, so it changes all of the time. In today's video, I'm going to be making this lovely outfit that I am wearing in all of its neon 1960s fabulousness. I use an authentic vintage sewing pattern to do it and fabrics from moodfabrics.com. Uh, the pattern that I used is Advance 8911. I believe it to be from the late 1950s, early 1960s. If you have any information on the pattern, then please feel free to share it in the comment box below. I found this to be a very beginner friendly sewing project. It was supposed to be a one day make. That didn't necessarily happen, but it is completed. I do like how it fits. I like how I feel wearing it. And that's really what matters. I made some very weird and simple mistakes while making it that probably shouldn't happen but um, maybe it was good to bring me back down to earth a little bit you all have been so sweet and kind on my recent makes i did want to say thank you i'm super appreciative of all of you for being here and how much you encourage me and motivate me and share my videos i did not expect when i started this channel the community that would form here and i'm so grateful for it i won't do a super long introduction it wasn't a super long make or a super long process so we will get right into into the making of this fabulous neon situation using an authentic vintage sewing pattern from the 1950s or the 1960s I'm not sure oh and if you like the video like the video if you like me and what I do here on this channel then feel free to subscribe if you want to support the channel then leave a comment or share the video with a friend it is all so so very much appreciated so let's just get right into the sewing so this is the pattern I'm using for this outfit. I'm hoping it's a really quick summer make. It says so easy. It's advanced 8911. I love this skirt and top. It looks like it's gonna be easy to make and easy to wear. There's only a few pieces, seven in all, but I only have to use six of them. And so I'm excited to get started. I don't know the year of the pattern. So once again, if you have any information, then please feel free to share it in the comments below. And this is the fabric that I'm using for this make. If you've noticed on my recent videos, I'm trying to mesh the vintage with the modern. And what's really modern right now is the super bright and neon fabric. So this is the one that I'm using for the skirt. And the neon green that I showed previously will be for the blouse. I love how these two colors complement each other. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. So I started with the skirt first. It looks to be fairly simple. There's just one pattern piece that makes up the entire skirt and you cut it out three times. It is the front piece and then the two side back pieces and then it has to be pleated. If you watch my sewing videos, you know how much I struggle with pleats. I usually don't pleat. I just gather the skirt down and attach it to a waistband, but I really wanted to give it a try to do it correctly this time. And so I'm going to pleat it. You look at me like I'm crazy When I shut my feelings out You look at me like I'm different Still you stay cause you feel something real Get so lost in my moments Doesn't mean I don't need you I, I, I fell in love with your colors 
words that kind of tell me what I'm thinking. I fell in love with the way we are and the way we lose it. There's something different about us and the reason why we stay. They never know where we will fall Nobody can see us Still they wanna tear us apart There's something different about the way we are So what you see me doing here with the pleats is marking the fold line and the pleat line with two different colored chalks in hopes that this keeps everything straight for me and I can pay attention to what I'm doing and get this right for once. And believe it or not, this really did make a big difference. I always get confused with the crease and the fold and the pleat and all of that. So this really did make a big difference, at least for the way my brain works. And so I definitely recommend this method to just sort of keep things straight in your head. Sharing stories that we never had yet, none is real. I think we're searching for reasons not to be like this. They never know where we will fall Nobody can see us Still they wanna tear us apart There's something different about the way we are So let's go over what you just seen. After I folded, increased, and pleated what I think is correctly, I basted all of that down so it wouldn't move and shift on me. And then I seamed the skirts. It's three pieces, so it's a front, and then the two sides and backs make up the rest of the skirt. And then I left an opening for the zipper, which will be in the back, which made the closures in the back. And so that was something I'm not that used to, but I do like it, especially with the pleats because they kind of fold into each other the way that I did the waistband. And it looks really flattering on my butt. So I have a feeling I will be making a lot more of these skirts. And here is the skirt on the dress form. All it's missing is the waistband and the hem. And we are good to go. Sun is coming up. Are you ready to go? We can take a ride. We can take it slow. Your will is my law. I'ma let you be the boss. Cause I'll go where you go. I'll take you to a place. We can see it all. Step off the edge. I can break your fall. Your will is my law. I'ma let you be the boss. Cause I'll go where you go. I moved on to the blouse. Both pieces were cut on the fold, the front and the back. And this is a faux button situation that I didn't pay as much attention to before I started as I probably should have. Gonna stay in this moment. Gonna lay here on the grass. I don't need to feel lonely. I am finally home at last. Dad I added the darts and the tucks, and this is when I realized that we were gonna have a slight problem with this faux 
panel because I had already somewhat ruined it. And so I had to try and iron out the mistakes and it ended up ruining this fabric a little bit in the front. You see the white lines on here. I don't know if it was because the iron was too hot and I scorched the fabric. I'm not sure what happened. This fabric is like a stretch denim almost and something I had never worked with. And so I'm not really sure what happened that ruined it, but I hope I don't make that mistake again. And I had come too far to turn around and I didn't have much of this left. And so I just continued. So this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I keep saying I'm going to read through the directions before I move forward, but I still never do. And so here we are. They wanted me to like fold over this. It was cut on the fold, but then I have to like fold the fold into a thing. I don't know, but I think I stitched these together and it will somehow make this look right. And then it's like a center panel sort of situation. I just really hope that's the center. I don't know. I'm gonna stitch it though and see what happens and then baste it across the bottom. It looks almost not centered. It's too much space there. I'm gonna try to get it centered and we'll see what happens. Walking down the street so many times my feet know every brick and stone could wear a blindfold no matter what I do. So I messed this up by not putting the markings on both sides of the pattern for the stitch line. So now I'm guessing this is how this goes. I'm gonna have to iron all these creases out that I already ironed in. You're gonna stitch it there and then this will make like that little thing in the middle where you put the faux buttons. And all of that should stretch out when you're wearing it. And that's how that's supposed to look. I hope I can iron those creases out good. First thing I'm gonna do is stitch along that line. And then you tack it down at the top and the bottom. And it's gonna end up making that little faux panel thing in the middle. So you just put buttons, but then there's no button holes. There's a side zipper. So undoing all the mistakes. the magic places in the world I've been to this is where my heart is oh you know it's true no matter where I go I'm coming home to you 
So I pushed on and sewed the side seams and then I had to leave openings three inches down um, and that's what you see me measuring. I'm not really sure what happened here. I ended up going back and doing this the way that I know to um, finish these shoulder edges and so I ended up stitching that down by hand. And then Maverick helped me with the process of covering buttons and that was really fun for us. We struggled a little bit, but we finally got them done. And I love that they matched the skirt and I think it definitely adds something to the blouse. And I made them big and a lot of them to sort of cover up the mess that I made on this panel here with the ruining of the fabric or whatever. These are the buttons that I ordered. They ended up being so tiny, and so I didn't use those, of course, and I will use them at a later date, hopefully, for maybe like a sleeve cuff or something, or something for major. I don't know what else you would use these tiny buttons for. And so this is the mess of this center panel. I had used chalk to mark, and then tried to wipe it off. Some of the color of the fabric came off because of course I didn't pre-wash it as I was supposed to. And the ironing and the starching, I really don't know what happened here. I don't, but I think the buttons definitely distract from it. I'm gonna go with this teal zipper because it's what I have in my stash and I just really don't feel like going out. And yeah, I mean, I feel like it looks, you know, it's in the color family. So I'm gonna insert the zipper now and then they want me to put a hook and eye at the bottom, which is weird, but that's what they want. I don't know if I'm gonna do that or not because I'm gonna wear this tucked in. So I really just think it's unnecessary. And then I guess I just hem the bottom. And that's it. What do you think of the spots down the middle? Do you think it's super noticeable or not that big of a deal? Let me know in the comments what you think um, of how it turned out, what you think I did wrong or what I could do to fix it. So here you see me doing the waistband. I do not know what I was thinking. I don't know if I was just overly tired at that point or what exactly happened that made me stitch this waistband closed, turn it with a loop for like 10 minutes, all of these things. And then when I went to attach it, that's when I realized my mistake. Like I had never made a waistband before. I just don't know. So I decided at that point to take a break. So then I came back for day four of my one day make. I put in the zipper and then I attached the waistband correctly. Um, like I've done a million times, I don't know what happened. But yeah, so, so I put in the zipper, which went in fairly easy. I attached the waistband, it closes in the back. I hemmed the skirt and this look was done. Um, I am very, very happy with how it came out. Um, it, was, it was supposed to be a one day make that did not happen. It took about four days and then I took like a week and a half long break. Um, we went on vacation to go visit my brother and all of these things. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked the colors. It was definitely me stepping out of my comfort zone when it comes to color, which is something I'm really trying to push myself to do. It looks very 1960s to me with these colors. And so I did the hair a little bigger. It feels more 1960s. I definitely see me making more um, outfits using this pattern because I know the next time I make it, it will go a lot smoother. And it is just very easy to wear. I feel really comfortable in it. It was my first time working with stretch denim which I chose to do because the pattern was a little bit smaller than my actual measurements and I just felt that the stretch um, denim would give me the extra inches that I needed. Um, sad about the mistakes that were made here on the fabric but I do like the fit of it. I love the buttons. I love the fullness of the skirt. I wouldn't mind if it were a little fuller but overall I really really love it. But I would definitely like to hear more opinions on what you think of the outfit and the colors and um, the shoes that I'm going to go put on to take the final photos of me wearing this garment for me to share it with you all. Um, there's more pictures and videos over on my Instagram at so so drew. And so, yeah, um, thank you for being here. And I will see you in the next video that is soon and sure to come.